Taffy McFadden, are you kidding me? That's right, today we're interviewing Taffy McFadden here on Will Alexander's Dog Show Tips, brought to you by ProPlan, nutrition that performs. Hi everybody, we're here today with Taffy McFadden and we're going to ask Taffy some questions that I'm all sure you're all dying to hear the answers to. Hi Taff, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm pretty good, I'm pretty good. You guys are surviving this uh, isolation all right? Yeah, we're thankful for good weather and a lot of garden area to take care of because I think that I've binge watched everything there's possible, you know, short <laughs> of uh, whatever the Tiger King was. I, it's not really my genre. Yeah, I haven't touched that yet either myself. So I keep being pushed to, but I'm not going to. All right, let's start then. So, uh, can you tell me how you got first, how you first got involved in dog staff? My mom and my sister, um, my sister, Honey Glendening, um, had Irish setters, uh, a male and a female, and she sort of dabbled with showing them. And my mom decided that she wanted to try English setters. So unbeknownst to me, they um, threw me in the car and took me up to the airport. I was in a really bad mood. I remember feeling so okay. bad about it. Um, and I was just being a brat and I didn't want to go and just get in the car. And at the cargo place, they they went in and brought a crate back with a little English setter puppy for me from Sally Vertulia. Oh, okay. um, Reggae oh. Run, yeah. So, um, and uh, that sort of started it. I showed um, that little English setter bitch um, to her championship in Canada. And um, my sister started breeding English setters heavily after that. And... Uh, there we go. I, I, How old were you? I think I was six when they bought me the puppy. Um, and so I think I didn't probably show anything until later that year. I, but I was really young. I know I was not seven yet. Yeah. So I think I showed my first dog when I was six. You beat me. I was seven. Anyway, okay. mentors. Who, who, who's influenced you, Taffy, over the years? Um, I mean, probably to start with my sister, um, she used to work with me showing dogs all the time. She was a really great teacher. Um, then I had the absolutely the golden ticket. I got to work for Susan Hillman. Um, I wouldn't still be in it if it weren't for her. She just, she was, as you well know, just the greatest. She, she helped, uh, form so many people that are in dogs today and I don't think there's a person alive that could even say anything bad about her I mean she just was she was an icon um, and then later on I would probably say Mark Shanoff um, I remember having a conversation with him right after um, Bill and I were, had been married and had Taylor, our oldest daughter. And I kind of thought I'd, you know, kind of cut back and maybe not go to dog shows anymore. And I remember him sitting me down and he didn't verbal, he didn't like physically slap me, but he verbally slapped me and said, you know, you're our hope. Don't you dare quit. So <laughs> I would say those three were probably the, the reason I'm still plugging away. Do you have any good uh, Susan stories you can share with me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so many. I, I just, I remember we used to go to Bermuda once or twice a year and um, oh my gosh. <laughs> she used to take whoever the assistant was that was working for her and we had so many good times. It, it just, it was a year that um, Bill, Tr um, Bill Trainer had gone with the Irish Water Spaniel Aristocrat. Oh, nice. And um, he, um, Michael Dockel, Michael Dockel was working for him. And somehow Susan arranged it that I could go down to the beach with Michael and Aristocrat. Oh, my gosh. I still have that picture beside my bed. 
That's an amazing of us story. playing in the, on the beach in Bermuda. Yeah. She was just Do uh, <laughs> a great dog. I mean, just amazing. A typical Irish water spaniel, but a really great dog. So, yeah, she was so marvelous. Another time um, we were on the Montana circuit, I think, and, and Susan's best friend was Tim Brazier. And um, Mrs. Clark and Mrs. Stevenson were there. And um, I was, I don't know, maybe 12, 13. And she said, we're going next door to the rodeo with Mrs. Clark and Mrs. Stevenson. Well, I couldn't even talk to Timmy at that point, let alone <laughs> those two. And um, I remember sitting in the stands with the two of them. And they didn't call it a rodeo. They called it a rodeo. And just listening to those two kibitz about the horses and the steers and the cowboys. Oh my God. Oh, Amazing. Sure. <laughs> Explain yeah. the, the, the relationship between Timmy and, and Susan though, for everybody, just in case people don't know. Okay. I always said I was going to write a book of who worked for who, because I thought it would be so fun. Oh, for sure. Um, um, Pat Tripp. It's uh, like a very, category. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, Pat Tripp, who was uh, one of the foremost handlers in Canada, um, at one time had Tim Brazier and Susan Hillman working for her. And um, they just were fast and furious friends. And it continued till the day Susan died. Um, they just, they have the same sense of humor, the same love of dogs, both so talented and great teachers. Um, it, they, they were, even though Timmy moved down to Southern California, I think they probably talked at least once a week, every single week. Yeah. I mean, they were just best friends. I miss those stories. I know. So you, you've done so much. You, you've, you've had as many wonderful wins and dogs. Do you have a favorite win? Favorite win. Um, Honestly, I think the first time I won the variety in miniatures under Ricky Coster at PCA. Um, I remember that. Yeah. I, my bitch wasn't the one that everybody thought was going to win. And <laughs> she did. <laughs> And I remember Mark Shanoff, because Mark was the one that had the one, Mark Bredder. Um, and um, Mark was supposed to win with um, his bitch. And I remember when I won the variety, Mark went running into the ring and picked me up and spun me around. It was <laughs> huge. I'm sure, I'm sure. Did you have a favorite dog? That's really almost impossible to, yeah. I, we've been so blessed. Um, probably the easiest one I ever had. And I never really got the easy ones. Usually I got the ones that needed a little, you know, something to pull it out of their system or over, uh, you know, um, get over an obstacle. Usually they were timid or um, um, just not quite, they needed somebody to help them make themselves feel good about themselves. Um, so probably the easiest one I ever showed was Spirit the Giant. She, I held up her armband. That, that is all I had to do. And that girl just, I swear, she'd look at me like, put your feet together, you know, fix your hair. I, I never had to do anything with her. She was, I, I, she took me for the ride. I had nothing to do with it. So that, that was probably the most fun because I didn't have to work very hard. <laughs> They, all, they make us look good, those ones, no question. Yeah, we love those ones. <laughs> <laughs> what about breed? What's your favorite breed? English setters. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, when Bill and I first got married, um, we moved, I moved from Canada. Um, I didn't have an English setter in my life. And, you know, I, you, I kind of forgot about it. We were busy trying to develop a business. Um, and then my sister sent something down to me. And it was like, of course, I knew there was something missing. You know, I just, um, a second to an English setter would be a standard poodle. Yeah. There's just something so brilliant about them. But. 
you have a favorite English setter? Probably kid. Yeah, he was a great guy. He was just such a dope. Um, <laughs> you know, I was showing his mother at the national and Melissa and I were trading dogs. She was taking Zabri home, who was beautiful, but another one that knew exactly what to do, you know. And she said, okay, I'm going to switch dogs with you. You take Kid and I'll take Zabri home. Oh, I, I remember it was like six weeks of trying to get through to that dog, trying to get him to be what he could be. And um, I used to call her up daily and, can we switch back? Can we switch back? <laughs> but that he just he got it he figured it out and um he was he wasn't a soft dog but if you raised your voice to him the world crumbled for him and um so he he really came leaps and bounds but um i i enjoyed that kind of aspect in a dog too yeah he was fun to watch the two of you were yeah. fun to watch uh, any advice for new handlers taffy well, prior to all of this, my advice would be go to school and get a, an education before you decide to become a handler. Um, and now that this um, new world form has happened, I would um, definitely suggest that, but also save your money. Be prepared. Prepare for a plan B. Um, you know, we're all kind of in a um, holding pattern in the world, you know, not just dog handlers, but um, as a world whole, um, keep your options open, mm -hmm. definitely. I just remember as a young handler, it was hard not to spend all your money because you, at times you'd have all this money. <laughs> so it was hard to uh, learn to save money at that point. Yeah, I was saying, you know, I can't believe I still have money in my bank account right now. But, you know, we're not buying parking spots or grooming spots right. or buying plane tickets or hotels. And it's like, oh, wow, look at this. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. Um, what has been your biggest obstacle in the sport, do you think? My health. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Um, had a couple of glitches down the road was going full bore and then all of a sudden kind of slamming halt and um in amongst all of the you know really difficult stuff i've i've ended up with lupus so um i am a very type a person i go i can go three days with no sleep working i just like if you know if there's a task ahead of me i go and that's kind of been curtailed a lot with the lupus but i would say i've been very lucky um i married a very talented man we have a wonderful business we live in 80 degree weather it's april it's so beautiful um it looks beautiful it is beautiful we've been blessed with great dogs and clients um it's been a magical ride other than the health blips. Yeah. If you weren't a handler, what do you think you'd be doing? I'd be an awesome millionaire. <laughs> they just didn't accept my, you know, application. I, get it. Um, I think um, if I didn't show dogs, um, I don't have a very green thumb. That's Bill's gift. Um, I always thought I'd own a flower shop um, because they just make people happy all the time. Um, so probably something to that effect. Okay. Skill or talent that most of us wouldn't know you possess? <laughs> I make a mean cheesecake. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, Bill says it's the best he's ever had. There you go. That's, a, that's definitely a skill to have. What about superstitions? Oh, so many. Um, if the weekend starts, with one rubber band for your armband if it breaks that day i don't even want to go in the ring i don't even want to go in the ring i just know it's not going to work out um i was listening to bill's um 
audio with you. And it's so funny. I, I had no idea he was so superstitious about stalls in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Of mine as well. If I go in, whatever number of stall, if it's a good day, I will wait in that bathroom until that stall is open. <laughs> I've never heard so that before. Stupid. Either one of so, you. <laughs> and Lucky Pennies, too. Um, he, I think I absorbed that from him, though. So, yeah. I have that up here. From Mr. Belter was obsessed with that for a while. Yeah. Um, which dog from the past do you wish you, you could have shown or owned? Shown or owned? Golly, there's so many of them. Um, well, there was an Afghan that came to Santa Barbara that to me was my all time favorite dog that I knew nothing about. I was walking past the Afghan ring at Santa Barbara and there were a lot of people around and I thought, oh, I'll just have a look and see what's going on. It was, it, its name was Smoking in the Boys Room. Smoking in the Boys Room. I'm telling you, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I missed a dog. I missed one of my own dogs to show. I was so captivated by its performance. I loved that dog. I don't even remember what its kennel name was, but I loved the name Smoking in Boys Room. <laughs> that was probably one of my favorite. I also loved Indy, the Doberman that Andy Linton showed. She just made you look like you knew what you're doing. I love those kind of dogs. Oh, sure. so. Fun to watch, no question. Yeah. What past show dog or dog show person, sorry, what past dog show person do you miss the most? Susan. Susan? Absolutely. With all of the incredible accolades that Bill and I have accomplished in our career, I'd love to talk to her about them. No, oh, I'm sure. We all miss her up here. You know. I love getting she together with Harold. Harold can't not talk about her. So. Oh, I know. I get choked up every time I think about her. Yeah, she's solid gold. Yeah, I wish more people in our world knew about her. Oh, my gosh. I know. Yeah. Um, as judges, yeah, can you think of what the, the, um, the current judging process, do you have any advice for that? It's a scary thing, isn't it, sometimes? It is really scary. Because there's a lot of people that are um, coming up quickly that I don't necessarily feel have had the groundwork. And then there's so many people that I wish that would apply because they're so... They have so much knowledge. And I think it's just such a scary process for people that they just, they're afraid of, of not passing the test or the, you know, or 40 years. So. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I could name 10 people that should just be given their license in specific breeds or groups. And, um, they never will. Pat Tripp was another one. You know, she was, that lady showed every single variety of dogs that was around and her knowledge was just in, uncomparable to anybody. And she never wanted to do it. She didn't want to fail. That's right. It's a shame. We, we lose a lot of knowledge because of that, I think. Yeah, and we have other people who are very um, confident in their abilities, yet maybe shouldn't be, you know, but. I once wrote this article called um, Dog Show Judge Needed No Experience Necessary, and it was, it was about uh, giving, taking a book of standards into a, a coffee shop and giving it to a kid to read, and an hour later testing them, and they could pass because they could memorize things and never exactly. have seen a breed, and they could have passed a sporting group. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. Scary thing. Terrifying. Like we, I talked to George Olson a lot, and then, then there's a waste of George should have easily been a sporting dog judge, but yeah, the way it goes. Yeah, he, he didn't really want to though. Well, that's a different story, anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, you have a worst. What what would be your worst defeat in dogs? Do you remember a day that you thought 
was your worst defeat. <laughs> we have a few of those. Uh, yeah, there was one I remember, and I think I'm pretty much known for my good sportsmanship, and I'm a great loser. I remember showing Zabri, the kid's mom, at the garden, and I lost the breed. And I don't even remember who judged. I don't remember who won. And I left the ring. I went best of opposite. I left the ring. You probably beat me. I hate to even <laughs> say this story. <laughs> um, and Bill said, you need to go back and get a best of opposite sex picture. And I was like, I don't want a best of opposite sex picture. <laughs> And he said, you need to. So I went in the ring, I got my picture, and I wish I could remember who the judge was. Um, and they said, this is really lovely. You're gonna do some nice winning with her someday. And I just, I lost it. And I said, I've already done it. <laughs> and for anybody who knows me, that is so not me, but I was so ticked off about it. She, oh my gosh, she showed so beautifully. And she was Maybe. such a lovely bitch. Maybe that was um, your favorite breed, that's why. Yeah, yeah, a little passionate about that breed, a little bit. Zabri was lovely, she was a beautiful bitch. Yeah. yeah. All right, um, with all this time off, what are you guys doing? I know Bill said a lot of yard, yard work, anything else? Oh, no, so much gardening, so, so much gardening, yeah. Um, I wish, you know, um, our son and his wife and grandbaby, we're grandparents, live about an hour away, but we really can't, you know, yeah. can't see her. So I've learned Zoom and I spend a lot of time sounding like an idiot on Zoom with my granddaughter. Um, so I can't wait till we get to have her here and teach her how to swim in the pool and all those good things. But the garden looks amazing. Um, we've been cooking a lot, which probably means my 600 pound life is gonna come visit us shortly after this is all released and we'll do some filming. Um, okay. Other than that, that's about it. All right, I have one more question for you. This was a special request question from somebody uh -oh. that sent me a message. Someone wants to know, I don't know if you will guess who it is. I wanna know if you know how many scarves you own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, easily 200, probably. <laughs> no, I don't know who that was. <laughs> <laughs> I just got that request this morning, so. <laughs> well, thanks, Taff. Had a great time. Hope you're doing well. You look great, as usual. Oh, thank you. We miss you, and I hope to see you back in a fun building somewhere. Oh, we will, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. well, you take care of yourself and uh, I will get back to you soon. Well, thanks Taffy, that was great. If you like what we're doing here and you wanna see more, make sure you tune in to Will Alexander's Dog Show Tips and like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions for me, go to dogshowtips at gmail.com. And we have tons of more videos there with training and more interviews and more wake up calls. And we have more upcoming news that you can find on willalexander.net. Until then, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.